Welcome back for some more Star Citizen. I'm here today with Short Circuit. Hello. And this month, the ship of the month is the Anvil Terrapin, and we have never done a walkthrough or talked about it uh, and given our personal opinions uh, about the Terrapin, and so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Yep. Alright, so Short is the subscriber, so this is definitely his ship uh, for the month. Uh, I cannot be bothered. That's, that's sort of true and not true. And, uh, alright, so let's get to it. Let me uh, adjust my ridiculous camera here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Alright. So, right off the bat, really cool bug. I don't know if you can see, but if I stand still... Yeah. What's even cooler, though, is the turret is tracking where I left off, because the turret is trying to stay gimbaled on target. That is, I was noticing that, yeah. So the ship, is, the ship is twisting to the left, and it's been s slowly twisting to the left, powered down, uh, for the entire time we've set up. Yeah. <laughs> Except the, the gimbaled weapons, which are desperately trying to stay on target. These are Doctors, which is the same series that is on the uh, 600i. Are those stock, or did you change them out? No, those are stock. All right. I don't know why, but they changed them. It, it used to be a uh, scorpion, something like that. It was ballistic, I remember that. Well, it wasn't I mean, ballistic. It was laser cannons. Uh, now it's now it's what is this? Energy repeater? It's distortion. Oh, just oh goodness. Okay. So, the role of this ship, the Anvil Terrapin, is basically scout reconnaissance. It is a heavily armored tortoiseye. Uh, designed to take punishment, but also designed to have uh, get in and out of hostile environments and be. I don't think this, the ship has any stealth capacity, but I mean, not directly. They've not. said anytime you manage your systems correctly, you can have a stealth-like effect. So you could. Uh, I don't. We'll have to check on stealth components, but I don't think it comes with stealth components either. Uh, it comes with, uh, I don't know, we'll check, and I'll put it in the chat right here above us. Uh, but bottom line is, you could make this a, a pseudo-stealth ship uh, for scout reconnaissance. Because of the fact that it's heavily armored, both shield-wise and physically, you could, in theory, disengage your shields and rely purely on physical armor to lower your EM signature. For IR, you would have to rely on high-performance coolers, probably to lower your overall signature, and then ditch the energy weapons um, for ballistic. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, pretty much. To lower your overall IR signature. Okay, so, yeah. what do we have on the exterior? Clearly, anvil, right? It's got the big blocky yeah. shapes, struts uh, yeah. on the uh, cockpit. What else? We got, what, eight main engines, yeah? Four. Well, well, yeah, technically eight. Yeah. Well, nine, if you include the back. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So These are all VTOL. Yeah. So your mains are VTOL, which mm -hmm. is which is pretty excellent. And then you have uh, engines in the rear that we'll, we'll go look at here in a minute. Yeah. The, um... Like an Osprey and a, a Harrier jet had a baby. <laughs> That's a really good comparison. <laughs> a really good comparison. Yeah, because Osprey's actually fulfill a reconnaissance role, depending on the, the loadout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's so, so we're wrong. Ten engines. So we took a quick pause and we pulled up the uh, stats page just for fun. And because, uh, you know... And there's ten engines. In the interim, Short did a walk around, and he said, "Oh, there's there's two engines back here." I don't know. There's two engines back here. At least what appears to be just two engines. There is a distinct lack of RCS thrusters on this thing, which is why it handles every bit like you think a, a turtle in space would handle. Ooh, yeah. So, maneuvering thrusters. It ha has. Uh, oh gosh, I can't. I have the page, but it is uh, 
very, very tiny, and I can't jump over this rail. How exciting is that? <laughs> Alright, we're back. We've been having lots of conversations off camera while I tried to jump over the rail uh, because I jumped out of the rail in a, in a um, earlier moment and it completely derailed the entire uh, walk around of the anvil. So we were discussing engines and there are 10 total, right? So eight VTOL engines and two on the rear. And then we began discussing thrusters, which, which there are 10 gimbaled. Uh, and uh, where were they? Tiny, Tiny ones. Uh, there is two in the back, then there's two here, and I can only imagine that that's yeah. mirrored up top. So there's eight. So there's an additional two somewhere. Probably on the side somewhere, maybe. Yeah. Or on the front of the, uh, well, no, that would be your retros. Yeah. So, less than maneuverable, uh, very tanky. Although the shield generator is uh, a medium, then the power plant is a medium, and uh, I believe they're going to have some level of armor that is uh, special to the Terrapin and for its role as a tank, uh, or a, a tanky a reconnaissance platform. Um, and that's the exterior. It's it's lots of people like this ship. It is basically a turtle. But there, there's not a great deal to it. I mean, it's basically a large fighter-sized craft uh, with a very niche role. I will say, even though it is quite a plain ship, like the amount of detail they have put into this ship is by no means substandard. Oh, well, I would like agree. The insides, you've got detail on all the parts, even the inside bits that don't actually get seen that much. So I mean, there's... They did not... Well, absolutely. Yeah. Ooh. So that's the interior of the engine, of course. And then I was noticing above the engine, you can see a textured panel mm -hmm. uh, with the Anvil logo on it. Yeah. Right there. And then you've got, um, I mean, just the the uh, the sheen that they built on to the, uh, the metal casings on a lot of the engines yeah. is pretty impressive as well. Yeah, they did not skip anything. Even though it looks like a very simple ship, they did not skip any details. Indeed. No missiles either. So I know we, we yeah. talked briefly about armament. Its its only weapon systems are <laughs> this. You know what? I would actually rather to put missile racks on this instead of a turret. Points like if they could do that in the future, replace guns with like missile racks within reason. Because uh -oh. I think that would be a much more stealthy component for this thing. That takes it down a dark, dark rabbit hole. <laughs> this is, I'm the guy who's asking for universal mounts for uh, my favorite ship, so. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna head inside. So, oh, wait a minute, before we go inside, look at this right here. So if I were to argue what I think these canisters are, I would, I would, I would suggest that they're potentially uh, high resolution, like imagery. Cameras? Yeah. Yeah, cap imagery capability, which are non functional at the moment. But that's what I would think those would be. Oh, you know what these could also be? I'm missing two uh, gimbal thrusters. Oh, you think? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I would much rather than be uh, infantry or infantry imagery uh, yeah. collection devices for the front of the ship. I mean, yeah, they, they're, they're, that would probably be the most likely scenario. But it just looking at them, it's like, hmm. Yeah, but I don't. Tape. I don't see any. They do rotate, <laughs> but I don't see any like thruster mount on it. Yeah. All right. So, shall we go inside? Yep. Very quickly. So the inside, again, uh, you know, this is a pretty small ship. Oh, bye. Yeah, so the door itself actually tucks into the side, and it's really not got anything spectacular as far as discerning features. So 
Oh, I mean, you... I will tell you the first time I uh, I walked up to this ship, I had no idea how to get in. Like, it is very cleverly yeah. concealed. Yeah, it's very well concealed. It looks just like the other side. The only difference is that little tiny panel on the side. Hmm. All right, so now I'm in the interior. So this is a this is a two-man ship or a one-man ship, and you lose control of the vessel while you're you're executing your right. mission. So the centerpiece of the terrapin is its uh, utility item, which is a gigantic scanning system. Right. And presumably, you'll be able to execute this very well-labeled device without creating a giant blue ping uh, in the universe, thereby giving away your position. Uh, but it's it's not functional just yet. But it does... But you can sit in it, maybe. Use the forge yeah, station. Sit in. Well, I was, cr I was crouched. Yeah, it brings you up your control screens there. Yeah, so right now it just gives you the uh, the standard REMS MFD. So I will say, even though two people can operate this vessel, um, if you do two-man crew it, you're going to be hot bunking. Because it only has one bunk. Okay, let me out of the chair. Let me out of the chair, Chris Roberts. All right, there we go. All right. Yeah, behind yes, the one bunk. back of the ship, we've got all of our living, creature comforts. <laughs> living accommodations. A very yeah. stiff-looking bed facility. Yeah. A, oh, man, that's a legit modern microwave right there. Like, that's a... <laughs> I didn't even notice that. But yeah, you're completely right. That's a microwave. That's a modern microwave, like a year 2019 microwave. I need something. I need something better than that, Sig. Uh, ooh, life support panels locked. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. So a lot of the components in this are not quite uh, in yet, as they're starting to uh, bring in components and, and physicalize that in the ship. Uh, this ship has not been uh, ha have, has not had that ha happen to it yet. So they're working so on it. Interesting enough. Life support is not a real component right now, so that's obviously locked. But notice the jump drive, we were talking off screen that the jump drive is unable to be changed right now, so that one's actually locked. Well, but this jump drive would be, that's the jump drive, not the quantum drive. Mm. I mean, I, I fully believe that this ship will have a legit jump drive for, for long range reconnaissance versus a, a quantum drive. drive. Label here. Cooler. There's your radar. Locked. This is your component housing for, what is that? Shields? Power plant. Power plant. There it is. Yeah. Should have known better. Wow. I, there has to be a separate quantum drive because, so, some of the components are in. Yeah, anything that is actually in here is, is available to be open to things that are used. Because these are not stock. These are actually endo coolers. Which is why they're red. Endo coolers. Alright. So only one escape pod too, if you look. Uh yeah. So I guess Captain goes down, Captain with, the goes down with the ship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely utilitarian head. Fully functional. Yeah, you can always hide in the uh, the water closet and hope the T Rex doesn't bite you. Oh man, ridiculous! Right, so again, sparing no detail on the interior as well. The uh, yeah, I, I would replace this very ridiculous scanner uh, station sign. I think that's uh, superfluous given the the nature of the ship. But but the uh, rear side of the scanner actually has some pretty cool detail. I assume I, I'm very curious to be if this is where they perhaps put in like uh, some type of scanner components to where you can oh. Uh, Blades. Yeah, blades. Uh, or well, but then there's the the buffing components. Are they calling those blades too? Yeah. Shards, blades. I think the term is blades. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, so. you could put them there, or you could put it here, because there's actually a spot that says management CPU on either side. You could put them there as well. Well, but that may be um, ship specific. Ship so specific like versus ship specific. Yeah. Yeah, versus scanner. Yeah, and then we go to the cockpit. So, oh, entry panel, systems. There you go. Just labels on everything. It's ridiculous. So I will say this. So we were talking about this the other day. The Terrapin has one of the best MFD laydowns. Yeah. So, well, let's see. Is it going to turn on? There it goes. Yeah. Just a really good 3D uh, radar. And then a, just a really nice uh, MFD laydown. And if I had my uh, my head tracking on, I mean, God, look at that. You can... Yeah. Because they're all the way... <laughs> and they're actually duplicated. The... Yeah. I mean, there's so many MFDs on the Terrapin that it's 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 basically duplicative. I, I would be very curious to know if, if at some point the pilot had limited control capability over the, uh, the sensor rig without getting in the chair. Like, degraded, but but still there because certainly you've got enough um, you've got enough MFDs to make that happen I mean you can't even see the complete MFD on the left and right on the far side I think what I would like to see is the Terrapins direct heavy ordnance from capital ships so your scanner stations will be basically like laser pointers that will be painting these targets for the larger capital ships to hit. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could you could absolutely manage that. It would be, uh, I don't know if it would be, it would be, it, maybe that was the only aspect the pilot could control. But you could maybe get a 20K lock on for like a, a Javelin's size 10 torpedoes or right. something like that. With a, or with a hop the range. So like you could bridge the gap so they could go further. We used to have this uh, artillery piece that was, uh, or artillery round laser designated, but if you're yes. in the wrong position and it reads the wrong laser, uh, it tracks on you, and not <laughs> not off the reflection off the target. That right. would be a super exciting mechanic for <laughs> this ship. <laughs> like you have to be at the right angle so that the torpedo is tracking. Hey. The target and not the you. Reason for all the armor. <laughs> well, you're not going to survive an anti-capital <laughs> ship size 10. But that would be a fantastic mechanic for Terrapin because it would give them something legitimate uh, to do as far as like first strike capability for right. opening blows of a cap ship. You'd be able to really have to get your guys out there. And if you have Terrapins out or, or, or a, a ship capable of lazing a target and being stealthy uh, while they do it, you might, you might actually... Uh, Right. Really getting in the opening salvo. Well, that's it. So I think what we may do is uh, call it here. Keep this a nice and short one. Yeah. Exciting ship. Lots of people love the Terrapin. Lots of people interested in small crew exploration. And, right. uh, and also the military aspects of exploration. Uh, and the site actually labels it as a Pathfinder. So I, I, yeah. there may be some type of jump drive specific... Um, well, you know, you may see this as well. this being the one that navigates the small jump paths. Yeah. And the carrot being pri primarily oriented at the medium to large. Well, I think it'll have to be. I don't think Carrick will fit in a, a small. So though it'll be really restricted as that. far as its uh, capability. Yeah, so for the explorer that wants to go through small jump points and have a little bit more uh, versatility... It'll definitely have to be um, in a Terrapin or a uh, or a Freelancer Dur because those will be able to take your small jump points. Yeah. Well, all right. That's it. That's we'll it. See you in the next video. See you in the next one. Later.